Good evening and welcome to Tony Cunningham Memorial Gymnasium as they're honoring the seniors here in what will be the final home game because in the infinite wisdom of the MIAA, they penalized St. Mary's and even though they'll be one of the highest seeds, if not, they'll be up in the top three, they are not going to give them a home game. They'll be on the road for all of their tournament games. So they're honoring the seniors, the cheerleader seniors. Cheerleaders is a big part of this program. They work hard. They put a lot of hours, time, and effort. They have their tournament, if you will, exhibition that they go to. They compete with teams from all around. And a lot of time and effort put in. So. Unfortunately, I cannot hear the, the announcer. The sound system is not the best here, but they're honoring them. <laughs> Having pictures taken at midcourt with family and friends. The last of the seniors, according to Joe Gill, who's doing the announcing. There's only a couple for the boys. <laughs> Maja Wall. Family coming out to Santa Court. Mom, getting flowers. <laughs> Mr. Bellevue taking pictures. Up next, number 13, Captain, the rise of the bell will be from the end. Anais Mirabel. And his mom is coming out for flowers. They had him listed as a junior on the program. And, up next, and last but not least, Stephen Farmer. With his family, large family. His brother here, his brother played last year, and they, two years ago, him and his brother played for the state championship team, and they went to the state finals last year. Stephen finishing up a very good career, great career here at St. Mary. He's been a captain and a very good leader. We ask the senior families to come back to the court for one group picture, and how about one more round of applause for our senior cheerleaders and basketball So the seniors have been honored. They'll all come out to midcourt with families and relatives and they'll take a large group picture. Hopefully they can get everybody in. They'll have to squeeze in a little bit. <laughs> Getting a nice round of applause. And we'll get set for the championship final in the 2018 Spartan Classic. Right, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Tony Canegala Memorial Gymnasium for St. Mary's Basketball. It's the boys in the annual Spartan Classic final. They're trying to do what the girls did, win their own tournament. And they have to get by Matt Nguyen to do it. St. Mary's 16 and three, Matt Nguyen 14 and five. 
Yeah, as I mentioned before, this the MIA has decided that this will be St. Mary's last home game, regardless of their seating in the tournament. It's almost like a comedy show. They're going to throw it up again. That ball went down. and David Brown is starting the seniors. Majak Wall, Anais Mirabel, Stephen Farmer starts anyway. Mirabel will be starting tonight with Joe, Joseph Abadi Walsh out with a knee problem. He says he'll be ready for the tournament. So let's hope he does. Jason Clayton is two. Ten is Cedric Kitchener. They fake it, they go to the corner for the shot. Good for three. Jarrett Byrne gets Matt Nguyen on the board first. 33 is Connor Byrne, 33 is Philip Trapani. Walking in, little turnaround hook. Honuagu gets St. Mary's on the board. Steps called, they stuck him in the backcourt and he traveled. Man, you has brought some fans. Pretty good crowd here for this one. Farmer from dead in the corner, no good. The runner by Byrne off the backboard, coming away with his Mirabelle. Kind of a wild shot. Mirabelle from dead in the corner, can't hit it. Tipped away, Onawago keeps it alive. Long ball by Echeverria, he's off and running. Stripping it from behind. Nice shot by Echeverria. He stripped it off the leg of Connor Byrne. St. Mary's gets it back. Mark Conceseo. Conceseo. I know I'm not pronouncing that correctly. The head guy for Matt Nguyen. David Brown, as I mentioned, for St. Mary's. Palmer gets a pick, can't use it. Mirabel going inside. Hook off the rim, no good. That's more shots than we've seen on a Wago take, other than layups. They kick it out for three. Off the rim, no good. Matt Nguyen comes away with it and getting hit is Philip Trapani on the putback. And he'll try to tie the game up at five. He's got two at the line to do it. First one is good. Makes them both. Yeah, we have our first tie. Five five as Farmer brings it up. The kick out on Oahu. Shot clock winding down. Palmer for three. They broke that press pretty well. Byrne gets the easy layup off the pass from Trapani. And it's 8 7 St. Mary's. Matt and you're looking for a charge. They don't get it.
Farmer again for three. Off the rim, no good. Clayton pushing it up. Man to man. On a wagon, it says, not in my house. Eschevaria gets it to go. Stripped away by Fama, but coming up with it is Kinchner. To the floor, he tried to get it out to Clayton. Fama picked it off. Fama gets loose. No good. Anawagu tracks down the long rebound. Echeverria, no good. Burn with it. He'll give it to Clayton to bring up. Almost traveled. A wild shot off the side of the backboard. Stolen away by Mirabel. Up court, Echeverria. He was too far under the basket and wound up trying to catch it and shoot it at the same time. And he hit the bottom of the backboard. Matignon gets it back. And we're going to drive by Trapani, and he gets hit, and he'll be at the line. He's two for two from the line. He'll get two more. Bounces all around the rim and falls out. Pacheco and Lopez, uh, excuse me, Perez, comes in the game. Official blue whistle, there was something on the floor. Missed them both. Anuagu comes away with the rebound. Still 10 to 7. Pachico set the pick. Fama lost the basketball. They get it back. Clayton takes the shot. Hits it for two. And it's 10 to 9. Perez takes the shot, off the rim, no good. Byrne passes it off, off the rim, no good. The ball goes to the floor. Perez comes up with it. Inside, Pacheco can't get the shot off. Two minutes and counting left in the period. We're gonna follow. This is strange because we have Jarrett Byrne, we have Liam Byrne, and we have Connor Byrne. Two of them has to have to be twins because they're both seniors. The other one is a sophomore. So it's a family affair for Matignon. They got ten players, and three of them are Burns. Stolen away. That was by Trapani, and they'll give it to Clayton to bring up. We're going to whistle for a foul. It's going to go against St. Mary's. Anawago got hit for a hole.
And a while we'll get a piece of the shot. Echeverria can't hit it. Bomber went up to get the rebound, hit the rim a second time and bounced and got away from him. A minute and counting. Off the rim, no good. Tipped. Anawago brings it up, gives it to Fama. Echeverria wide open for three and knocks it down. His second trifecta, he's got eight. Up and good by Jarrett Byrne. Samirius can almost run the shot clock out. From the foul line, Onawago. Whatever he had for breakfast, eat it every day. He's, he's doing a lot better shooting that one. Stripped and knocked away. And Chivaria lays it in at the buzzer. He's got 10 in the period. And that little run for St. Mary's, a three by Echeverria, scores the last five points. And it's 17-11, a six-point lead for St. Mary's at the end of one. We start the second eight minutes. St. Mary's has a six-point lead, and they have the basketball. These are two Catholic Central League teams, but Matignon is in the small Catholic Central, where St. Mary's used to be, and they used to be rivals in football and all the sports. They dump it inside, nice job by Anawagu. Pacheco couldn't get it to go. They're gonna call steps. Barma took it away and got it to Perez, but he took two running steps trying to lay it in, and now a tough time for St. Mary's, because Anawagu was down, and Nicole Gagnon is coming out to check on him. Boy, that would be a major blow for St. Mary's, especially for the tournament. And they're looking down around his ankle. The only saving grace is that there's about a week before the tournament starts. So if it's anything that might put him out, he'd have a week to recuperate. But let's hope it's not that bad. Let's hope he battles through it and gets back up. And it might be a cramp or turn the wrong way and gets out of it quickly. It certainly doesn't look good. Onawaga was holding on to Nicole Gagnon as he limps. That right foot, right ankle. Now they got a body Walsh, the Twin Towers down at not an opportune time. They go underneath. Pacheco commits the, the foul. They made a great entry pass. Jarrett Byrne got it to corner Byrne underneath. Fake got Pacheco off the floor and drew the contact. He'll get two at the line. Missed the first. So the Twin Towers are both down. Nicole Gagnon working on Anawagu. Over on the sideline. One free throw by Byrne, Connor Byrne. And they're looking to clean off a spot on the floor right where Anawago went down. St. Mary's by five, as we're just about a minute into the second period. Steps called against Perez again. He got stuck, nobody came to get the basketball and he wound up taking steps. So St. Mary's a lot smaller now. With the body Walsh and Anawago both on the bench. They go to that little help to scout the defense. Banging it in is Jarrett Byrne. He had seven in the first period. Echeverria had 10.
Mirabel high off the glass. Pacheco high in the air. Out to Farmer for three. Fourth trifecta for St. Mary's. Pacheco went a mile high in the air to get that rebound. And then Farmer takes it away. And we got a foul against Matignon. Farmer took it away and they called a foul. I think Trapani thought they were gonna call it on St. Mary's, but they didn't. Marvin's Rosiris in the game. That makes St. Mary's even smaller. As Chavaria gets around the screen, he's got his third trifecta. And Shamiris has the biggest lead of the game of nine. They're using that little helpless skelter defense. Missed. Jarrett Byrne missed corner Byrne. Pick up the loose ball and laid it in. And we got a timeout. It appears as though Onawaga was going to be okay. Nicole Gagnon does a great job for St. Mary's. She's a trainer for all the sports, boys and girls. And she's been around for a while. She does a terrific job. I'm sure she taped him up. I think we're going to see him back in the game. Twenty-three, sixteen, St. Mary's. Five forty-four left in this second period. This is the annual Spartan Classic boy style. The girls won theirs. The boys trying to follow suit. Man, you want to beat Greater Lawrence? And here he's knocked off Cathedral. Look at somebody break through the middle. Shot clock winding down. Rosiris winds up off the rim and out. They're doubling and tripling any chance they get. So it was way strong because that was because he got hit as he was taking it. And Trapani will be back at the free throw line. And I'm sure David Brown is happy to see Anawagu walking okay. We're going to get Fali in the ball game. Chico goes out, Fulahi comes in. Off the rim, no good. Perez nails the long rebound. Fama trying to hit a fall away, got stuffed. Big time blocked by Jared Byrne. Samiris so gets it back, but they gotta remember, they got the shot clock winding down. They gotta get it up. Tip and knocked out. The shot clock goes off. Echeverria tried to throw it up. It got blocked and went out of bounds. But they didn't get a shot off. So Matt and can get a little closer. St. Mary's has committed five fouls. They only have one to waste. And we're just now getting to the halfway mark of the second period. Matt has only committed two. Shot, no good. Deflected away. 
Burnt comes up with it, stolen away by Rosiris. Another big block by Jared Burnt. Perez trying to go underneath, and Jared Burnt just went up and swatted it away. It goes. Jared Byrne, he's got 11 of their 19. Matt Neon's back winning four. Anuagu's coming back in the ball game. Shot clock winding down, they gotta get it up. Fillet knocks it down. From the corner, too strong. Tip, and it picked up. Fillet tipped it away. Rosiris came back with it. Perez knocks it down. So the lead was four, and they had the basketball, Matt and Yorn, but now it's back up to eight. Stolen away. It got knocked out by Kitchener. Farmer's going out. Perez goes out. Imbruglia and uh, Onawagu. Everybody's glad to see him come back in. That Sharia got loose, couldn't hit the shot. Coming with the rebound was Trapani. They almost lost it. Bruin couldn't catch the pass. They go inside, block. Falehi and Onoagu both went up and got a piece of it. And that's the second foul on Onoagu. And that's going to bring Stephen Farmer back in the game. St. Mary's has reached the limit. Off the rim, no good. By Connor Burren. The Burren family has combined for 14 of the 19. Jarrett's got 11. Connor Burren makes one. He's got four all in the second period. And it's 27-20. The runner by Imbruglia, a tough shot. Clayton on the fly. Stay, stolen away by Echeverria. Bounce pass to Imbruglia and he lays it in. Nice play, what a great play. But Echeverria does that a lot. Just went up and stole the ball. And they made the nice pass for the easy layup. That little helpless scout the defense. From dead in the corner, a three by Kitchener. And it's back to a six point lead. 120 and counting in the second period. From dead in the corner, off the rim, no good. Falehi comes up with a big rebound. Echeverria off the rim with his three-point attempt, and we got a minute left in the period. And we got a foul against St. Mary's. That's going to be free throws for Matt Nyon. Cedric Kinchner. Kinshaw uh, will be at the line. One on one. Didn't get the first one, so we won't get the second.
Shot clock winding down. Palmer the fall away off the glass, no good. Clayton pushing up, shot clock is off. Manuel can hold for one. Pass went right through the fingertips. Palmer for three, knocks it down. His third trifecta, and that's a backbreaker. Cathedral had the basketball down six with a chance to cut it down. They turned it over with a, a pass that couldn't, went right through the fingertips. And Shavaria, they passed it around, winds up with Farmer hitting a three, and St. Mary's builds up a nine point lead at halftime in this Spartan Classic. It's St. Mary's 32, Matnion 23. As we start the second half, St. Mary's hit that big three by Farmer just at the buzzer, taking a nine point lead. And they we're lucky to get that pass complete. Short is short. Coming up with the rebound, the putback no good. The putback again no good. He gets knocked out by St. Mary's. Cornerburn had two or three shots. So St. Mary's has a nine point lead. Matt Nguyen had the basketball and they still have it. Wide open in the corner and he falls down. The ball goes to the floor, we got a jump ball. No, we don't because Matt Nguyen called timeout. So they hold on to the basketball. That took all of two seconds. Well, they still have 28 seconds on the shot clock. Jarrett Byrne had 11. Of the 23, he had virtually half the points for Matignon. On the other side, Farmer had nine three three-point baskets. And Echeverria had three three-point baskets. He had 13. Tim Hughes had six different scorers. Matignon had five, but only two of them had more than one basket. Trapani had three points, but he had three free throws. So they didn't put Anwagu out on the floor to start the second half. It's Fama, Pacheco, Mirabel, Echeverria, and Perez. And now I'm not sure the officials are directing people back to their bench area. I'm not sure what that is for. I think they want them to come out and clean the floor. They got the ball into Kinsher, Kinsher who was going to take a shot, and he slipped and fell. So I think they want to come over and dry the court down. They're checking all the areas now. They're checking all over. We've never seen that before here. But obviously when everybody goes to the floor uh, and they're working hard out there, perspiring, the floor can get wet. And now I'm looking saying, oh my God. Unwagu uh, came out on the floor and played again in the third period. Now he comes out and he's on crutches. What a blow that would be to St. Mary's. He's sitting on the bench, but he, with his leg elevated and he walking on crutches. So we won't see him the rest of the game. Shot no good, rebound, stripped away by Mirabel. Knocked out by Matignon. So 
Well, Jared Byrne, who's a big boy, wasn't having his way, although he did get 11 points, but he had a couple blocked. But now he's, he and his twin, Corner Byrne, are the two biggest guys on the floor. Mirabelle went underneath, turned around and laid it in. I think they thought he was gonna keep going. He stopped, spun around and laid it in. St. Mary's goes to a 2-2-1 half court trap. Palmer almost stole it. They went underneath, but they couldn't handle the pass. Shot from outside, Clayton hits a three. Pacheco, Fama, shot clock winding down. Perez high off the glass, no good. Mirabel took it away and they're gonna call a foul. He ripped it away and it looked like he was gonna have the basketball and they call a foul. They call the foul on Pacheco, and that's his third. That'll bring Filet off the bench. Banked it in. I don't think he called last, but he'll take it. So it was 11, now it's six. They wanted a double dribble, I think they should have got it. St. Mary's running the clock down. And we got a foul on Mirabel for an illegal screen. Second foul on Mirabel. Oh, Magnuan eating in to that 11 point lead is back down to six. They go inside, they have that height advantage. Strip. Knocked out. They tripled up on Connor Bryn. Connor and Jarrett, the twins, are huge. St. Mary's doesn't match up well with either one of them. Mirabelle gives away a few inches. Even Filet gives away a couple. And they're all trying to dry off the floor again. They go inside, they call it on Mirabel, back-to-back -back fouls, that's his third. And that's gonna bring Rosiris off the bench and will make St. Mary's even smaller. This is a Matignon team that I think, I don't know for sure, I think they're Division Four, and they're gonna cause some problems in Division Four. Matignon calls a timeout, look like they might be in trouble getting the ball inbound. 5.21 left in the third period, St. Mary's got it up to 11. But Matignon has run five in a row to get it back to six. And St. Mary's getting in foul trouble. And they're already without Anuago. Again, what a blow that would be for St. Mary's tournament-wise. He's had a great year for St. Mary's. Most importantly, defensively. Blocking shots, making people alter shots after he blocks a couple, looking for them.
Clayton doesn't take the shot. Stripped away, they're gonna call Falehi for going over the shoulder. So Samir is getting in foul trouble. That's their fourth foul. They only have two to waste and we got 5-12 left in the third period. Manuel hasn't committed any yet. Samir's playing a play that helped the scout the defense off the rim. Matignon getting all the rebounds, getting second and third chances. And we're going to get a foul, I think, against Matignon. They're going to call it on Jared Bruin for wrapping up Filet, who had the basketball. His second, only the first on Matignon. And Samir's will get the basketball, but Matignon's getting second, third, and fourth opportunities with that big lineup they have. And Samir's with Fali, and otherwise they're using mostly guards. And the floor again, right where everybody went down. Echevarria doing double duty. Echevarria and, and Farmer doing double duty. Clean the floor. And Chivaria brings it up. And Chivaria got knocked down. Long three point bomb off the rim, no good. Farmer comes away with the rebound. Stolen away by Pitsings, deflects it off Farmer. It went out before Farmer touched it, and it went off. Kinsher. Samiris gets it back. They're giving him a fresh 30 seconds on the clock. Rosiris with Echeverria looking for a pick. Get tipped, looking to go to Sirius. I thought it could tip. They're calling it off St. Mary's. Echeverria thought it got tipped too. Coming up to the halfway mark of this third period. Off the rim, no good. Farmer with the rebound. Zurich gets stuck. That's a rear. Off the glass, it goes. He got the good bounce. He threw it up as he was hit. It went up high off the rim, bounced high in the air, and fell gently through. And he's looking for a three-point play. And he gets it. Very good free throw shooter. The lead is back up to nine. They almost threw it in the backcourt. Kinsher shaved it. They tried to hit Kishnick, break into the basket. They threw it by him, it deflected and went out. And Bruckley is coming in. Perez is going out. As Chevaria, the long three, no good. Farmer tracks down the rebound. And we got a pushing foul against Byrne. That could be his third. It is his third. 
Good hustle by both Falehi and Farmer to get to the rebound. And now we got another foul. Trapani. And we got a technical foul called. That's the second time that Echeverria got knocked down. He grabbed them and knocked them down. One official called a foul, the other official called a technical. Oh, Echeverria will get two, St. Mary's will get the basketball. So the team fouls catching up. Five to four, St. Mary's. Back to 11. Matt New and fans don't like the call. He didn't call the first one. They kick out to Imbruglia. Off the rim, no good. Looked like it was going down. Clayton will bring it up. Tipped away by Fama. As Chivaria lays it in from Rosiris. And it's 13 points. Palmer knocks it away. Rosiris strong to the basket, lays it in and gets fouled. Palmer started it with the tip away. When they tried to go inside, Rosiris brought it down. He saw a lane, took it strong to the basket, laid it in and got fouled. And here we go again with cleaning the floor. Man didn't look like he was getting back in it. All of a sudden. A nine nothing run. Man you on Samir's got the first basket by Mirabel. Man you on ran the next five. And they haven't scored since. So a nine nothing run. Has pushed that lead to 15. And now they're doing, still doing some housework on the floor. So they're done with their gardening and housework. Manuel has really complained about the floor, but it's the same for both teams. But a nine nothing run, Manuel on, on that five to two run cut the lead to six. It was nine at halftime. And they looked like they were coming back. And now Shamir's run nine in a row, looking for 10. They missed free throw. So nine in a row makes it a 15 point lead. And they got two of the big guys away from the basket. And they're taking threes. Fama went up, had it. Before he fell out of bounds, he got it to Rosiris. Fama, outstanding. 
The kick out to Imbruglia for three. Too strong. Palmer there had it taken away. Trapani took it away. They're going to call a foul on St. Mary's on the drive. Kinsher went all the way from one side to the other trying to go around. Now, I'm not sure what the officials are doing now. I'm not sure what they're doing now. They're discussing something, and now they're going to get the coaches together again. And I have no idea what the discussion is. And they're out again, working on the floor. This has never happened in all the years, all the games we've been doing here at St. Mary's. And they're working hard to try and straighten it out. They're still discussing the referees with the coaches. They've done everything they could, wiping off the floor. I don't think the, the floor was the reason that Matignon hasn't scored in a long time. They put their big guys outside. They have a big height advantage inside. And they are not trying to go inside. <laughs> they put both Jarrett and Connor Burn out past the foul line. And the discussion is still going on with the coaches and the officials. And I'm not sure what they're doing calling all these kids out of the stands. Whatever they're doing, they're trying to straighten it out. They've got the kids out of the stands underneath with the broom to wipe the floor out at any time. So they get volunteers now. And we're going to get back to basketball, I think, eventually. 133 left in this third period. St. Mary's by 15. Matt Nguyen has the basketball. And you know this is going to be a topic of conversation if Matt Nguyen doesn't come back and win this game. Stolen away by Fama. And we get a reach in foul. So with 129 left in the third period, both teams will be shooting free throws. And Consequeo, Consequeo, I don't know if that's pronouncing that correctly or not. Mark, the coach of Matignon, not happy at all. Farmer goes underneath. Great pass. Falehi missed the layup. Great play by Farmer. Got Falehi wide open. Blocked from behind by Falehi. He makes up for that one. Blocked and taken away by Byrne. He made a nice defensive play. A minute and counting. And again, they got one of the big guys way outside. They take a wild three-point shot. They're not even trying to go inside. Echeverria lost it. They couldn't get it in. He was going to try and go to Imbruglia. It got tipped. He got it back and couldn't handle it. And it went out. Now we got people out 
swabbing down the floor when the, when the ball goes to the far end. Again, they got Bryn way outside. And he's got a height advantage. And here we go. This is going to be a topic of conversation. They're not going to call it. They're not, the officials are going to get together again. They're not going to call this a travel, I don't think. They're out swabbing it down. And again, I've done a ton of basketball games in this gym. And they're calling a foul against St. Mary's. Even though Kinshaw just fell down. They called it against Fama. And that'll be one on one for Matignon. So the shot clock is off. And I don't know what they're doing now. No good. He got one shot. It was one and one. Now what happens to the basketball? There's 28 seconds left. Nobody was in to rebound the miss. Are they giving it back to Matignon? I don't. I think they're suspending the game. They're not going to continue. So they're not going to continue with the floor the way it is. They gave him the one on one. And now with 28 seconds left in the third period, they're going to suspend it. I don't know what they're going to do, how they're going to play it, or when they're going to bring it back. We'll have to find out. But Echeverria had 20. Rosarius had two. Perez had two. Onwagu had four, and our thoughts and prayers go to him and hope he's going to be all right. That would be a tremendous blow. And Brugley had two. Mirabel had two. Filet, he had two. Palmer had three three-point baskets for nine. On the other side, Jarrett Byrne had 13 to lead Matignon. So it's 43, 28. With 28 seconds left in the third period, I don't know what happens now. They'll have to try and finish it before tournament time, I would imagine. Somebody's got to be the Spartan Classic champion. But right now, they suspend the game. St. Mary's went on. They were leading 34 to 23. Matignon ran five in a row to make it 34 to 28, cut it to six. St. Mary's went on a nine nothing run to build it up to 15. And then the ice capades took place down on the floor, and the, the last slide by Kinsha was the crowning point. They just said it's suspended. So we'll have to find out, see what they do, and try to finish the game. Because I said, somebody has to win the Spartan Classic. Matt and you are certainly not going to be happy if they have to come back here. But 43-28, 28 seconds left in the third period. We'll find out what happens later, but right now the game is suspended. They decided the game would not be replayed. It's, it's considered a game. St. Mary's is going to match the girls and win their spot in Classic. Marcos Echeverria will be the MVP. Stephen Farmer makes the All-Star team. St. Mary's will win another game, and both teams will get set for the state tournament. So with 28 seconds left in the third period, it's considered a game. St. Mary's with that 9 nothing run uh, at the end of the game. Wins it by, by 15 points over Matignon. They win their spot in Classic yet again. And as I mentioned, they'll get ready for the state tournament coming up where they will be the number one seed uh, in Division Three North. So good luck to David Brown and his kids. Good luck to Matignon as well. The spot in Classic is in the books. 43-28, St. Mary's wins it in a game that was suspended and finally canceled uh, agreement by both teams to, to call it a game at the end of three periods. So again, we hope you enjoyed it. I'm John Hoffman saying we'll see you next time.